So I just had this video about ADHD and managing money go viral on TikTok and that brought up a lot of questions from you all about how to navigate and stop emotional and impulse spending. Hi friends, welcome back to the Avocado Toast Budget. If you're new here, my name is Lexa and today we are going over my top tips for how I navigate and try to reduce the amount of impulse and emotional spending that I do. It wasn't until recently that I was really aware of my relationship with money and my tendency to impulse buy and since then I've come up with some amazing strategies to help prevent me from impulse spending but also some strategies on what to do if it does happen and how I can navigate that inside of my budget so that I can still stick to my budget and meet my financial goals. I heard a lot of feedback from my budgeting with ADHD video on here and then also on TikTok that a lot of you struggle with that as well. It is not just something that people with ADHD do. It is something that I think a lot of us do as well. And trust me, even if you feel like you can't imagine how you can navigate this problem of impulse spending, I have lots of ideas for you and I know that there is hope. But before we get started, if you want to learn more about budgeting, saving, paying off debt, and how to finally feel more confident with your money, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below and push that bell notification. That way you never miss an upload. And let's go ahead and get into it. If you've been to my channel for a while, you might know that I actually got my master's degree in behavioral psychology. So I know all about navigating ways to set ourselves up for success when it comes to wanting to change our behaviors. And that knowledge helps a lot when it comes to impulse spending. So I wanna teach you what I have learned. First, I wanna cover the difference between impulse spending and emotional spending. They are often used interchangeably and while they sometimes have the same impact, they usually don't have the same motives. Impulse spending or impulse shopping, buying, comes from a variety of factors. These could include mental health, a restrictive budget, or just simply seeing something that you love that you didn't plan on buying and wanting to purchase it. Impulse spending isn't always connected to a certain emotion. And I wanna emphasize that it's not always a bad thing. Impulse spending becomes an issue when it starts to negatively impact our finances and gets in the way of us achieving our goals and feeling like we have a healthy relationship with money. We also see impulse spending a lot especially amongst people who have ADHD, when it comes to hobbies. You know that feeling of like getting really hyper fixated on like a new hobby, like candle making, crocheting, ukulele playing, I have a lot of them. And suddenly finding yourself surrounded with hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of things to accompany that hobby that you end up just quitting and setting aside within like a week or two. That is so common, I feel you on that, and a lot of these tips are gonna help. Emotional spending, on the other hand, is often connected with a really strong emotion. Things like excitement, anxiousness, guilt, anger, and often it shows up as just a way for us to cope with these emotions. We see this example a lot in going out and splurging on a new outfit, a new drink, or even a new car to congratulate ourselves for a promotion or something big that has happened in our life. It's also the thing that causes us to mindlessly scroll and start shopping and adding things to our cart on Amazon whenever we're really frustrated or disappointed in ourselves. And again, emotional spending is not inherently a bad thing. The problem arises whenever it starts to negatively impact our finances. Buying yourself a cake or a drink or a new pair of shoes to congratulate yourself on something big is not a bad thing. And it's actually really healthy to take the time and energy and resources that you have to celebrate yourself. But it's only healthy if we're celebrating ourselves in a way that isn't detrimental to other aspects of our life. It's important to recognize the difference between these two because some of these tips will help you more with one than it will with the other. And sometimes how we approach navigating that type of spending depends on what the root cause of it is. So let's get into some of my tips about preventing emotional or impulse spending. The foundation of everything we're going to talk about is going to be recognizing trends. I highly recommend that whenever you find yourself really at the beginning just buying anything you make a quick note like literally a note in your iPhone app or in a journal whatever is most accessible and easy for you about what is going on in life this is where that kind of like behavior aspect comes in and if you're a psychology geek like me right now we're talking about the antecedents of behavior which are those things that come right before the behavior occurs 
So what is happening in your life or what are you doing that is happening right before you start to impulse spend or emotional spend? And then we're also talking about the setting events. This is everything else going on in our life that could be contributing to this emotional spending that might not be happening right before or after, but it's just kind of there. Things like maybe just in general, you're stressed out with your job. Maybe you're really excited because a certain event is coming up in your life that you're excited for. Maybe you've been forgetting to take your medication or you just switched medications. All of these things that are just kind of underlying factors play a role into why we are engaging in this behavior in the first place. And the only way for us to really recognize that is to take note of it so that we can go back and see trends. I find it's easiest to just get in the habit of this whenever I'm buying anything. Even if I know it's something normal, like going grocery shopping, still jotting down, how am I feeling? What did I end up spending? What's going on in my life? Really, it doesn't have to be anything too big. Just take a few seconds to write it down all in one note. And then you can go back and start to see, is there any trend showing up? Do I tend to overspend when something good is happening in my life? Do I tend to overspend when I'm stressed? All of this information is really important so that you can set yourself up for success in the future. This will also help you to determine if you are more of an impulse spender or an emotional spender, or if you're just a little bit of both. My second tip is putting barriers in place to this kind of spending. Listen, I am all for convenient shopping. I am the one that no longer goes grocery shopping. I get it picked up or delivered and I have my cards installed and saved in like all of my devices so that I never have to go scrambling looking for my card when it's time to buy something. But honestly, that probably means that I spend more money and I'm more likely to buy things on a whim because it's just so easy to do so. So if you know that you are struggling with impulse spending, I highly recommend deleting all of your cards off of like your phone, and Amazon and the places that you frequently shop. Companies want to make it as easy as possible for us to spend money, so most often they will save your card information. And there are ways for you to take that off so that you have to go looking for your physical card in order to spend that money. And I have found that oftentimes one of two things will happen. Either A, the time it takes me to get up and actually get my card, sit back down, put all the numbers in, find my wallet in the first place, gives my brain a few seconds to calm down and regulate, and then I'm able to kind of pause and ask myself if this is a purchase I actually wanna make. Or I will just realize right off the bat that whatever it is that I think I wanna buy is not worth me getting out of bed or off of the couch to go find my wallet, and then I end up just leaving it in the car and forgetting about it. Either way, this is all about just giving your brain a pause to be able to evaluate what it's doing, why it's doing, and whether this is actually helping you to reach your goals or not. My third tip is setting up online shopping rules. A couple years ago, I was really struggling with insomnia, and I realized that I was purchasing these things off of Amazon at like three or four in the morning and completely forgetting about them until they like arrived a few days later. And they were often things that like, I did not want. So whenever I noticed that that was happening quite frequently, I set up a rule for myself that no matter what, unless it was a necessity like cat food or toiletries that we get from Amazon, I had to wait 24 hours to buy the thing that I wanted to buy on Amazon. I had to leave it in my cart for at least those 24 hours. And what has happened since is that my buy later section of my cart has filled because I ended up just putting it in my cart, thinking I would come back to it later, and then I would forget about it until the next time that I ended up going to check out something on Amazon and I realized that I had that thing in my cart. And generally speaking, I usually ended up just deleting it or moving it to my buy later section. And it ended up saving me so much money and gave my brain some time to evaluate whether I actually wanted that thing or whether it was connected to just impulsivity or emotional spending. Along the same lines as this is my rule involving hobbies. I would spend so much money up front on hobbies that I ended up just quitting and forgetting about within like a week or two that I now have a rule that I can only spend like what is either left in my fun money category or like 20 to $30 at most on a new hobby that I am sure at the time is just going to be my favorite thing of all time until I have proven to myself that I am really interested in this hobby for the long run. So I'm talking like months 
before I will spend a lot of money on a hobby. I still allow myself to buy like the cheaper alternative to that hobby, but most of the time after like a week or two, I'm very thankful that I didn't spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on it because I have forgotten it. It still allows me to try out the hobby, it just might not be like the thing everyone online is saying that you need for that. And most of the time I figure out that I'm not quite as interested in it as I thought I would be. My fifth tip is to establish coping mechanisms that are easy to engage in. So one of the rules of behavior is that as humans, we are just naturally going to try to find the path of least resistance to the thing that we want. And we might not even be conscious of this. So usually what is happening with impulse and emotional spending is that it's so easy to do now on our phones that that is the path of least resistance to trying to get that dopamine hit or to trying to drown out those negative feelings. So our brain just kind of goes to that because it's so easy and often we do get that kind of like initial hit of dopamine which our brain is looking for. However, if we find ourselves emotional spending a lot or impulse buying really expensive products, that is no longer serving us even if it is easy for our brain to access whatever it is it's looking for. So we need to set up healthier coping mechanisms that do serve us but are still easy for us to engage in and still accomplish the thing our brain is trying to accomplish. This looks different for everyone depending on what works for you, but some ideas that I have tried, I have found to be helpful, and I know others have as well, are either texting or calling your friend just to check in, to vent, or just to share in that emotion with you, watching Netflix, or just playing a game depending on what you're into. My personal favorite is taking a bath. I love taking baths and that usually does the same thing at regulating my emotions and my brain and literally requires like zero effort on my part. You might find journaling or a quick meditation to help as well. But the important part is getting in the routine of establishing those coping mechanisms in your life so that they are easier to sub out whenever you do get that tendency to start shopping instead. Another very important honorary mention that I have to this list of things to prevent impulse spending applies to all of my neurodivergent, disabled, and or mental health struggling friends, and that is take your fucking meds. I'm not your doctor, I don't know what meds you take or if you should take them, but if you do take them and they have been prescribed by your doctor, take them. I know for me, I get in the habit of just missing one or two and that turns into three or four weeks. And that is usually when I find myself most dysregulated and apt to impulse or emotional spend. So do yourself and your wallet a favor, take your fucking meds. Now, all of these tips are great in theory if we can prevent impulse and emotional spending, but let's be honest here, we're all humans and we are going to resort to those coping mechanisms every once in a while, even if we really have it all figured out, myself definitely included. So I also have some tips on how to lessen the impact of that emotional and impulse spending on your wallet. One of my favorite tips is just the beauty of the dollar store. Recently, I was going through a really hard time in life and I found myself going to shop, scrolling on Amazon, thinking I needed all of these things to try to cope with the chaos going on in my life. But those things in my Amazon cart were adding up to a lot of money. So instead I got my ass in the car and I went to the dollar store. Could I have engaged in healthier coping mechanisms? Probably, but was I? No. So to try to lessen the blow to my wallet, I went to the dollar store where I was able to fill up my cart full of random shit and it cost me like less than $50 when the stuff that I had in my Amazon cart was like $500. And along those same lines of like shopping in store, I highly recommend that you try my method of the walk around method. I always wondered for the longest time why it was that the longer I spent in a store, the less I actually bought. And now I realize it's because I'm so apt to impulse spend and just start adding random shit to my cart when I like get that hit of dopamine and think I need that thing sitting on the shelf. And the longer that I'm walking around with that thing in my cart, the longer my brain has to take a step back, pause, regulate, and ask itself whether I actually want that thing. And a lot of times the answer is no. And I end up putting a lot back. So I often find that once I'm done shopping, I just like take another stroll around the store and I find myself going to put things back or just setting them aside and giving them to the cashier at the end. And that saves me so much money. This isn't gonna work for everyone. I know tons of people who the longer they spend in a store, the more they actually buy. But I have seen a lot, especially with 
with people who have ADHD that this is very common for us, that we actually need that extra time for our brain to process and decide if we actually want that thing. And then if worse comes to worse, just know that you can always return things if you haven't used them. I tend to shop at stores that have really generous return policies or Amazon where it's really easy to return things either to Kohl's or to UPS because I don't quite like to return things. I'm not great at it, but if I do find myself spending tons of money and then getting home with that sinking feeling of a car full of shit that I don't want, I tend to just keep that stuff in my car and drive around and then when I have time, I'll go and return it. I try not to beat myself up about it or shame myself. I just learn from my mistakes and move forward. And my third tip for navigating the aftermath of impulse and emotional spending is having multiple oh shit categories. In my budget, if you've seen like my budget layout, I actually have two different oh shit categories. One, I dedicate a certain amount every month for just like the month to month overspending that I do. And sometimes that involves some of those impulse purchases. And this category is so I have a little bit of money every month that I can kind of cover that overspending and still keep on track with my goals. And then I have a bigger oh shit category that I add to on a month to month basis for those bigger things. And in an ideal world, that would be reserved for like emergencies or sinking funds that I didn't quite plan for. However, I also know that it has been used in the past for some of those bigger impulse purchases. And while of course it's not ideal to spend all of that money on things that don't actually bring you the joy you thought that they would, it is a lot better to be financially prepared for them have a space in your budget to be able to kind of move around and act as a buffer to cover that overspending so that it doesn't set you back too much in your goals. And trust me, this category has been a lifesaver for me. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that it helps you on your journey to navigating emotional and impulse spending. Just know, no matter what, you are worthy and you deserve to spend money on things that bring you joy. And you also deserve to set yourself up for success financially in the future. And it is all about just establishing routines and coping mechanisms to help you reach those goals. Let us know in the comments down below what you have found to be helpful or what some of your biggest struggles are when it comes to emotional or impulse shopping. And if you enjoyed, please remember to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps boost this video to the top. That way more people can find this content. And I will see you all next time. Bye.